Now, um, one area of, of the optimization workflow that, that we should look into um, is risk analysis. And um, I'm going to keep it brief because I, I, I'm running just a little bit long um, of the target. So let's, let's go into this, uh, our risk profile, set up some risk values for different activities, and run a simulation on those. Now, I've already defined some risk values for some of the different activities in the schedule. What you're looking at is, is basically a, a risk profile matrix at the top of the screen here. We've got um, all of our activities lined up on the left, and we have five categories of risk across the top. We have a start of scheduled task, which is the, um, you know, the risk of, the, of an activity starting on the day that you, that you plan to start at. I'm going to set those all to zero. We'll assume that, um, that we're on track right now when the foundations work and steel erection can start on time but with a zero risk factor. We have um, scheduled task duration, which is the, the risk of an activity uh, being completed per the planned duration. Now, if we go back and look at our calendar, um, we're in, let's see, some summer months here for steel erection. We've got May, June, July. Let's pretend that summer months are monsoon months uh, in this area of the world, and uh, we perceive some risk to uh, getting that steel erected uh, with some potential storms and rain coming in. Uh, the way that we could represent that uh, would be to uh, drop this menu down. Um, you can very simply choose from zero, low, intermediate, and high risk value, or you can uh, explicitly define a percentage. Um, you know, an optimistic and a pessimistic percentage of completion there. I'm just going to pick intermediate risk uh, uh, for steel erection and shaking out the deck with a low risk to uh, welding and, and uh, of the, uh, the decking and the shear studs and the edge form there. I'll assume everything else um, is a short enough duration that, it's, that it has a zero perceived risk. Uh, beginning risk, I'll, I'll set uh, as zero. That's the ability of a subcontractor to, to show up with the right resources on the right day. Comeback delay, that risk is related to starts and stops. So if you have a subcontractor where you perceive a, a, a demobilization or a stop of work could uh, potentially impact their ability to come back. Let's say they need to leave for a week but um, you know, you're concerned that leaving for a week may mean that they actually don't come back for two weeks, then you can insert a risk value there uh, uh, to factor into the risk analysis. Um, production factor is another area of risk that we, can, um, that we can evaluate. This is where we can input our perceived risk um, related to the assumed production. So let's say um, layout slab on metal deck um, let's say we're using a total station for laying out the slab on deck. We've never used a total station before. Um, it's possible that we won't be as fast as we planned in laying these, uh, laying out the inserts, and so I can input an intermediate risk here, uh, and I'm going to just follow that up with a low risk uh, for all of the inserts uh, that follow the layout. So once you've established your risk profile, you can then uh, uh, run your risk analysis and your risk simulation. Uh, now, this is a Monte Carlo risk simulation. Um, it basically um, runs uh, iterations of all of the potential combinations of uh, risk delays, you know, be they optimistic and pessimistic. Um, you can do it up to a thousand times. Let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll just do 300 iterations uh, for the purposes of this presentation. And after completing the calculations, we can view uh, the results uh, in, in a number of graphs. Uh, let's first look at the temporal distribution of our risk simulation. Now, what this shows us uh, is a um, uh, 
basically it's the result of all of the iterations of completion. There's a summary up at the top that's telling us uh, our deadline is December 16th. Uh, currently, based on our logic and risk profile, it's expecting completion on the 15th with an earliest on the 13th and the latest on the 21st. And the 21st is, you know, it's going to be a week behind our deadline. What this results in is a 64% chance that we're going to finish the job on time based on our risk profile. Now, um, as a factor of optimization, um, you may want to go back into your schedule and modify some of the relationships, um, maybe add some buffer between at some buffer time between activities, uh, maybe um, you know restructure the sequence of activities uh, to try and mitigate some of that perceived risk. Let's say uh, you know as we look at the screen here, you can see uh, an array of yellow, green, and red dots. Now each of these dots, if you if you hover over it with your mouse, is going to uh, tell you what the the risk of meeting this date is. You can see the green dots. You know, it's telling us it's a 30% chance that we're going to miss this date. However, you should probably focus on the red dots because in some cases we're up in the 80%, 92% uh, chance that we're going to miss our date here at this location for welding these shear studs. Um, so. Uh, identifying those risky areas and insulating them uh, will help you to mitigate some of that perceived risk. Now, if you take some actions to maybe add uh, add resources to uh, to activities to to ramp up um, and to uh, give yourself uh, some better production on there, maybe um, let's take some of these activities and add some resources. Let's take this layout slab on metal deck and instead of forcing it to be paced, let's do it as soon as possible. Now that's going to in, that's going to insert some starts and stops in our uh, in our schedule for this activity, uh, which again should be part of our risk profile. Um, and so you have to make a decision on whether or not it makes sense to do as soon as possible or force the activity to be continuous. In this case, we want to mitigate the risk of overshooting our milestone date for completing the slab on metal deck. And so we had to make uh, that decision. Uh, let's go back into our uh, risk analysis, run another simulation, and see if that's helped our chances of finishing the project on time. Go into our temporal distribution. All right. So about, uh, up at the top now, you can see um, uh, for that deadline of December 16th, we're now expecting to finish on the 8th with an earliest on December 2nd based on our optimistic values and a latest of the 12th. And since the latest projection of the 12th beats the 16th, we've got 100% likelihood of finishing the job on time. Uh, so that's the kind of analysis you want to go through during the optimization process in structuring your schedule. Um, the result now is uh, a, uh, a schedule that we can buy into. Um, you know, we've, we've run an analysis. We've, we've evaluated the, the crew flow and the sequence. We checked it in the 4D simulation to make sure that the visuals of work make sense, that we're not installing, again, uh, a roof deck before the seal is there. Um, we've, we've input some risk values for some activities where we think there might be um, some potential for delay either in the, the overall duration or the production or the starts and stops. Uh, we factor those, factor those into our analysis and we've come up with what we feel to be an optimized schedule. 